Welcome to Andy Likes Cars. In today's video we're going to be looking at this, the 2010 Honda CRZ. The Honda CRZ came out as a replacement for the much loved 1980s hatchback, the Honda CRX. Today we're going to be looking at the styling, the design and taking it for a drive. Let's get started. The Honda CRZ comes with these super bright xenon headlights which are great for illuminating the road. The Honda comes on these lovely 16 inch alloy wheels. The Honda CRZ is a very futuristically styled car and that's continued with these clear headlights around the back. So under the bonnet we find a 1.5 litre single overhead cam engine in line 4 developing around 112 horsepower. And to the side of that we have an electric motor which assists the petrol motor to, to, to deliver a combined output of 121 horsepower. This means the Honda CRZ can get from 0 to 100 km an hour in 8.8 .8 seconds, while also returning a fuel economy rating of 4.4 litres per 100 km. So while the CRZ is a small car, there is actually a surprisingly large boot in here. Opening it up, you find that you have a reasonably large amount of space. The seat's really easy to fold down to get a nice flat load floor. And underneath this uh, mat here, you have some extra storage here, where you can put extra things. And of course, being as this is a Japanese car, you have this uh, wonderful tyre goop in case you break down and you need to change the tyre. That's one potential thing that may be a bit of a pain. In North America, this car is sold only as a two-seater. For the Japanese market, it was available as a four-seater. So, how much space is there in the rear seats? Let's find out. It's a little bit tight getting inside and it's not exactly a graceful entry. In the back it's tight. This is realistically only for small children, as if you're an adult the only way to ride comfortably is if you've been decapitated. Honda do really nice interiors and this is no exception. First off, you're, right in front of you is this really big steering wheel and it's got everything on it. It's got paddle shifters for the CVT automatic transmission, you've got phone controls, you've got audio controls for the stereo. So the gauge cluster of this car is a little bit different from most. It's got a blue lighting effect with a holographic digital number in the middle and it actually almost seems to be three dimensional. And when you start the car up, it does a little dance with a rev counter. Over here we have sport, normal and eco driving modes. Of course this is a hybrid so you'll want the eco driving mode occasionally. So it's obvious someone at Honda was an arcade game player because this gear lever is so like an arcade game console. Above here on the dashboard we've got this little storage container which is just perfect for sunglasses. So being as this car is nine years old, the audio system is probably a little bit out of date, but it's a Japanese imported vehicle as well. Apparently it has television, of course you won't be able to pick up anything with the television. The audio system itself isn't actually that bad. There are two tweeters up above, and there are speakers on the driver and passenger's doors, and two for the rear seat passengers. Overall it sounds pretty good. This car has heated side mirrors, and really easy to use air conditioning system, you just push it on, up, down, really quick, nice to use. All the driving controls in this car are centered towards the driver. So you've got these two air vents here which point can point towards the driver and that's really nice. It's, it's, it's a driver's car, or at least it feels like a driver's car when you're in the driver's seat. We'll find out how much of a driver's car it is when we get out on the open road. Up here we've got these sun visors. Um, yep. Just like any other sun visors, are pretty basic, there's no lights of these sun visors, so, you know, that's one area where Honda obviously saves some money, but there is a little cheap thing here to put your cards in. You've got these lights here, pretty standard map reading lights. So on the door panel we've got this chrome trim here, so these door bins are rubbish. They are really hard to access, and to be honest, the only way you can really get into them is to actually open the door. Because you can't really reach in like that when you've got the door closed. That's not so great. So you sit really low in the Honda CRZ, which really does align to its sporting credentials. And you've got these three driving modes on the side, Sport, Normal and Eco. In Eco mode, it's like someone's put a big piece of foam between the accelerator pedal and the actual throttle cable. It's quite lengthy, you can 
put it, do all you like with your foot and absolutely nothing happens. In normal mode, the dials change from a pulsating blue to green and the shift points change and you get a bit more rev range and it's instantly more responsive. And when you put it in sport mode, the car really lets you know that it's sporty because the dials turn red and the shift points change again. And instantly, the engine is there. So around town, this car's fine. I think the biggest drawback of the car is the limited rear visibility because um, this is a little bit like those 80s cars where it actually has two rear windows. There's like a little rear window and then there's another rear window above that. And there's a big fat bar directly across the centre. So around town, the ride of this car is actually pretty good. It's much softer than, say, something like my Suzuki Swift Sport. One other feature of the Honda CRZ is the engine start-stop technology, which is a nice feature to have and probably saves you a little bit more petrol as well. This car is very relaxing to drive. It's pretty smooth and it's quite nice. Um, it would make a good alternative to a normal hatchback. But the steering on this Honda is actually okay. It's direct, um, it's quite light. When you join the motorway, the engine makes a lot of noise, but not a lot happens. Um, and that's really typical of CVTs. But look, that's the only complaint I have about this car is its horrible transmission. The, it's also available with a six-speed manual transmission. So perhaps look out for one of those instead if you're interested in this car. The car rides pretty good on the motorway. It's actually really refined. It's nice. If I was to sum up this car, I would say the Honda CRZ is a housewife in sports attire. It's a hybrid with a tracksuit. It appears sporty on the surface, but underneath it skipped all the leg days. So that's the video for today guys, there'll be more content coming soon. If you liked my video don't forget to like, share and subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. Mm -hmm.